Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. That's a mouthful. Did some greedier runs recently, but making good progress. I totally just remembered we have all those challenges left to do as well. No problem. I'm looking at this and I'm going, you know what? Judas. Shoal. Negative. Mega Satan. It's a perfect combination. Shoal, negative, Mega Satan. Oh, Ruka. Hello, my son. He jumped up on my desk. He's sleeping up there. He doesn't sleep for long, though, because uh, more than sleep, he hungers. You know, if you had to define my cats by one of the biological needs that they have, you could probably do the same for some human beings. Ruka's definitely an eater. Tomo's definitely a sleeper. For real life? I don't know. You know what? Tomo's not a sleeper. Tomo's a, uh, he's a slurper. This boy drinks so much water. It's outrageous. Hold on, let me check the... D1. So doubles up a consumable on the ground. I don't really want to double up on a battery charge. This is a bit of a weird one. Um, I think what I'm going to do is wait for a bomb. I don't know if you could do that for human beings, you know? I mean, everybody, obviously, if it's called a biological need, you gotta do it, right? I'll tell ya. For sure, Kate's a sleeper. I may not be a... I'm definitely not a sleeper, I should say, but I'm probably an eater or a drinker in the whole scheme of things. I like to hydrate. But I also like to just mindlessly snack. One of those two is a big one. Ruka... You're an eater, buddy. Tomo, I haven't decided yet. He does sleep a lot. He lives a pretty low-key lifestyle, which I think is typical for cats. But he's also... I don't know. This guy drinks water like... Like he's going out of style. It's almost like he needs the... You know, water molecules in order to power his metabolic processes and keep his... Uh, cells and the, you know... Fluid outside of his cells at an isotonic level. Some kind of weird... You know, equilibrium-based sort of homeostatic environment like that that I can't figure out for myself. Thank you. Uh, I should have doubled up on that with the D1, but I'm really still hoping that there's like a battery, or not a battery, but a bomb available and we could Spirit Heart. Use the D1, double the Spirit Heart. If we don't double the Spirit Heart, it should double the battery charge, so... I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited. I'm also like... This, nobody likes to hear people talk about how busy they are. It's like the most self-indulgent thing. You know, here's how a good Rorschach, that, and I'm no expert necessarily on the subject, but I think this is a good Rorschach for finding out if you're actually busy or if you're just kind of bragging. You know, if you ever have someone that says, Oh, I'm so busy, like, let me tell you about all the things I've been busy working on. I'm not saying they're bragging. They're being braggadocious necessarily, but... I do kind of take that as like, look at how rich my life is. Check out all this stuff that I've got going on. If you want to know if a person is really, really busy, they'll be embarrassed to tell you. Like I am, it's Wednesday. I'm embarrassed by the amount of work that has gone into this week. Am I really going to double up on a, a single penny? I suppose I am. D1's cool. I just like Book of Belial more, especially if we're going to have a chance to maybe fight Mega Satan. Like Monday... Very busy day. Recording, NLSS, recording. Tuesday, stream for nine hours. After streaming for nine hours, um, I had to do a Java assignment, like, immediately. It's due, like, two days from the time that I had... I, it wasn't even started. This is when, like, a little baby assignment. This was, like, I'd already worked on it for six or eight hours. And I had, like, what I thought were finishing touches. Then I was reading the specs for the assignment. I was like, oh, my God, this thing just goes on forever. So that took, like, another maybe three or four hours last night. Went to bed, woke up. Today's Wednesday. Early stream. Followed by the NLSS. Followed by getting ready for TwitchCon because my flight tomorrow is merciless. It's, like... I don't know, the flight's at like 9-something a.m.? Weirdly enough, by the time you're watching this, I will be home. And this is going up on Tuesday, and I know it's going up on Tuesday because I just set my videos for all the other days. So happy Tuesday, everybody. It's Tuesday, my dudes, etc., etc., etc. But yeah, I'm, I'm embarrassed by my busyness this week. That's not a joke, by the way. I'm 
lot of things came coalesce down to like the final sort of hour here. I'm not very pleased with myself here for having the, uh, you know, gotten hidden compromising my deal with the devil chance, but it really also was not like bad time management. It's just like a lot of stuff all came together all at the same time. I'm looking forward to being away, but simultaneously, I'm like, dude, when I get on that plane, I'm gonna sleep like a friggin' baby. <laughs> it's only like a two and a half hour flight, maybe, but I'm gonna conk out. It's gonna be like the greatest sleep I've ever had, because for the first time in an entire week, I can just keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to just being able to like get on an airplane and Put my earbuds in, put a movie on, close my eyes, and just not open my friggin' mouth for like, I don't know. I can't really do it for two days, but you know, for at least a two hour flight down there. But again, you know, I do feel the need to point out it's a privilege to be busy, to like what I do and have opportunities to, you know, work more hours doing what I do. I perhaps wish that not all of it stacked up simultaneously within the you know, two-day period right before I had to leave, but hey, you know, I'm a young man. It probably doesn't have any lasting mental or physical scars, probably. That's how that works, I think. Yeah. You know, they're always talking about things like stress. They're always like, stress. The silent killer? Nope. We just put a question mark in there to clickbait you. Turns out the silent killer? Asbestos. Stress? Eh, you know. Just take a deep breath. Just get over it, forehead. This is a very good wave. I would like to go to our shop. Uh, we still have not had a single bomb access over the course of the entirety of the game so far. We could go cube of meat. I think I will. Sorry, not cube of meat. Um, I don't want to buy anything. Or do I? Shouldn't have done it. Um, Book of Revelations is what I mean to say. Because I don't know if we've had a fourth level bandage girl, so I at least want to give it a try. Plus, this is probably just better to begin with. But keep in mind... Number one baseline level priority is get uh, get your negative and your shoal play. Number two, if possible, Mega Satan. So we'll see what shows up in this deal with the devil. Um, if it's garbage, I would prefer perhaps not to take it. And by perhaps, I mean in, in all likelihood, I suppose. If it's not garbage, I'll have to think about it. I may still not take it. Not sure yet. Threw a monkey wrench into my plans. You know what I gotta say? Throwing another monkey wrench into my plans. My plans to be... And I, I admittedly, again, without bragging about it, it was insanely productive. I'm bragging about productivity over a three-day period, which is a little embarrassing, but hey, I am a millennial. I come by it honestly, okay? Hold on, what do we have in here? Peeper's Eye. Very weak item, but I feel like it's an item we haven't had yet on this save file, strangely enough. I don't remember seeing this eye following us around. Um, embarrassingly, I've been like, man, I wish I wasn't so busy this week. You know what I want to do with my time? Uh... You know, first off, like, spend a little bit more time with my wife, cats, you know, get adequate amounts of sleep, leisure time for my mental health. Sure, all that stuff is on the list, but really, like, what I'm thinking is, I really want to play more Team Deathmatch in Call of Duty Black Ops 4. I am stunned, and so are many of the people that watched us play on Tuesday and Wednesday, and so are, you know, all of the people that I'm playing with. Literally, you know, Dan, Mouth. Austin and Robert. We're all like, this game is just a straight shot of adrenaline. I've been playing so many Battle Royales, I forgot how fun it is to play a game where if you make a mistake and die, you don't have to, uh, you know, queue for another 45 minutes. You literally just spawn in. A little bit less tactical, perhaps even a lot less tactical. But you know what it's like? It's, here's the, a good example for you. It's like going from, if you're a nerd like me, if it's like going from a Magic the Gathering draft at a local game store where it's like, hey, everybody puts in 15 bucks and the winner takes it all, right? There's like two people in the draft pod that are like, that rules. And there's one, there, there's six people in the draft pod that are like, that sucks. I'm one of those six people. Now you go to a local game store and you're like, hey, thank you for the cube of meat. 
Okay, I would prefer not to take it. I'm not even going to look. Um, now you go to the local game store and they're like, Hey, the winner gets one more pack, but everybody else, you know, second through eighth place, all gets the same amount of prize pool. There's some of you out there right now going, well, why even try to win at that point? Well, because winning is fun, duh. But then there's, you know, the people like me are like, I'm bad and this encourages me to come play more and that's probably a good way to trick me into getting better. You know, that's where I want to be. I want to be at that local game store. I want the easy way out, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And I don't think you should besmirch my good name for doing so. I don't really need to go to the shop. The only thing I'm thinking is I might have the opportunity to get a key piece. Maybe I should have played the Demon Judgment in the room. I was just like, I got spooked. I was like, if I stay in here too long, I'm going to end up taking Dark Prince's Crown and Horror Babylon. But I'm thinking if we find a, a self-sacrifice room, we got the HP necessary to maybe get the one key piece, and who knows what happens after that point, you know? Anyway, again, I'm not trying to belabor the point. In the end, you'll never find, if you are of the opinion, like, you know, like your job is sitting in your chair playing video games, you'll never find a greater ally than me, because I agree with you 100%. I, always, I talk about it frankly and honestly, but... I do feel like, especially as, as you know, YouTubing and, and streaming has matured as an industry, um, a lot of people that do it professionally, I've done it for a long time, I've sort of lost touch with the fact that it's still a really, really good job where the duties are simple and fulfilling. You get to entertain yourself, speak to yourself on a regular basis. Not every, you know, other people have more boring parts of their YouTube careers, like editing, for example. I feel for that. Sounds rough. However, you know, would I rather be doing this or pouring molten hot lead in a, in a foundry? Easy choice, right? However, it does come with, and this is not to say it doesn't come with own, its own unique negativities, for sure. Mental health is a real problem for YouTubers and streamers for a reason. Anonymous feedback, but also, we definitely want a spirit heart here, I think. Give me a moment, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a little dicey. Okay, so that's a great pun, but simultaneously, screw you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're good. Grab this. I don't want to go to the shop. I do want to use this, though. Um, you know, part of it is streamer lifestyle tends to lead to isolation. Uh, you're spending a lot of time indoors. Maybe not handling the areas of your domestic life that you should handle. Like, you know, buying groceries to keep a reasonably well-balanced diet. Getting exercise, getting some vitamin D, you know, blah, blah, blah. All the stuff that when I bring it up on show, people people go, ah, I'm NL, I don't like to have fun. Okay. Whatever you say. <laughs> hey, I'm flying business class to San Jose. I think I know a thing or two about fun. Either way, I'm just saying, you know. I recognize, I'm still, I'm, it's taken this long to get me to the point where I'm like, dude, I am eager to have this time off been a busy week but either way you've listened to a grown man complain about his video game playing job for the last 14 minutes it's honestly not video games the playing of the video games the streaming the youtubing making the videos of the streams that's the fun part it's everything else that's exhausting and i very selfishly um you know basically do as little of it as possible even though it's irresponsible to do that you know, people send me an email, they're like, did you get that email? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, why didn't you reply? And you're like, I don't know. I just like, I didn't, that didn't sound like it would be fun. <laughs> so I didn't do it. <laughs> can I just like, can I just like do an extra hour of streaming instead? Like that's, that's a fun thing to do. Responding to these emails, man. That's like typing, but I'm not even hitting like WASD in the arrow keys and then my brain is like, ah, oh, you use the word besmirch there. Should you use the word uh, discourage instead of that? Because, I don't know, besmirch sounds a little bit like maybe they're going to think that you're making fun of them by using such a needlessly, uh, you know, illustrative word in the context is unwarranted. You know, you, always, you second guess yourself on those communications. What do you have for me? Guillotine? Um, I'm... I'm happy to have our first damage upgrade over the course of the entire game. I'm unhappy that it's the guillotine, which I call the guillotine just because I, I like to 
if possible, make everybody angry. See, in Canada, we say guillotine. Which I believe is the correct way to pronounce it in the language that it was invented for. French. Um, definitely check this. What do you got for me? Okay. I'm also gonna... I'm gonna play you first. And I may regret this decision, but we'll see. Um, but then, you know, it, it is a word that's, you know, borrowed or stolen or whatever you want to use. It's not really stealing, it's duplicated. Pirated from French. HP? HP, let's go. I have a feeling you're about to pay out with the blood bag. Knew it. Um, now you, if you could explode, would help me out. I'll, you know, be 100% honest with you. This run is basically... It's not a hot garbage yet, it's just garbage garbage, but could start to become hot garbage pretty soon. And that's hot in the sense of like garbage that has reached the temperature which it begins to stink. This is a very rude room. I'm insulted by this room with 422 cents in the donation machine. You would dare to give me a shop that contains a single battery? We've been taking some dumb damage. No questions asked. No question about it. That's, no questions asked doesn't really make any sense there. But, simultaneously, could really, really, really use some kind of augmented damage here. Again, guillotine, nice helper. And, you know, you're probably going to end up taking a little bit of extra damage just because of the fact that it exists and it makes it slightly harder to dodge. But, you know, you're going to get something out of it as well. Okay, we did get a deal with the Angel, much to my surprise. Synth Oil is beautiful. Just don't die here. Trinity Shield, it helps a little. So the thing to keep in mind is that Trinity Shield will stand in front of your face no matter what. And our damage is actually pretty solid here. All right, not in front of your face, like literally in front of your hitbox. I was using face as a colloquialism there. Instead of an anatomical body part. So as a result of this, we're now pretty likely at least to have a chance to fight Mega Satan. Do we have a run that's capable of defeating Mega Satan? As ridiculous as it might seem, the answer to that question is absolutely yes. Really, truly, genuinely yes. Especially if we get some HP from this guy. I don't really want to play the Demon Judgment anymore because we'll lose our other HP. We'll see how it goes though. Um, our damage is good. Uh, Rate of Fire could use a little bit of a boost. We'd always like to have a tier effect. A really, really good defensive item would be extremely nice as well. You know, like a Relic or a Miter or something along those lines, but... This ain't it, Chief. Abel. Mirrored Buddy. We don't need a description of what Abel does, but sadly that's because even if we had the exact dictionary definition of Abel's accomplishments, features, his curriculum vitae, if you will, we would still say, ah, this time we don't really feel like you're a good fit for the organization. Kind of a trash item. Oh, is this thing on? Sorry, you might have been listening there. You ever wonder about... I have, like, these fake fights in my head all the time. Because I go... It, it, you know, people say... My parents said this to me when I was younger, and I never understood. You know, I would... I played, like... I wasn't a good athlete as a child, but I played a lot of sports. So, uh, you know, I played baseball. And it's literally... I'm not going to jump on the baseball's boring train. You know, you like what you like. But it, as a child, it's the most boring sport you could ever imagine, you know? Half of the game is an 8 out of 9 chance that you're sitting on the bench. And a 1, well, being the 8 out of 9, but you know what I mean. You know, it's probably like a 5 out of 6 chance that you're sitting on the bench. And then a 1 out of 6 chance that you're either up to bat or standing on a base waiting for, like, the running algorithm to execute in your head. Like, okay, if he swings and the coach says go, then I go. You know, you get the idea. Um, my parents would be like, oh, you know, it's the championship game today. Are you nervous? And I'd be like, nah, not really. And then they'd be like, well, we're nervous for you. I never understood it. They were like, it's you know more nerve-wracking to watch someone you love do something than it is to do it yourself. Then, you know, I started going to my, well, Kate's orchestra performances. Since even before we were married, and I was, like, nervous for it. I was like, she's playing some really difficult pieces. Um, 
And the music's hard too. I don't even know what that joke's but it's just a that's what I call an anonymous double entendre, which is just when your brain goes, he's probably referring to something lewd, even though it doesn't make sense, so I'll just laugh like this guy knows what I mean. Anyway. What do we got? So I would always um, you know, I'm nervous for her. Even though even if she messed up really bad, I probably wouldn't even notice. That's not to say I'm not listening intently, just that I don't always know what I'm listening for. Um but I was getting these fights in my head. I'll be like, well, these people in front of me. They say something like, wow, this oboist is really bad, huh? I gotta tap him on the shoulder and say, oh, excuse me, what's that over there? And then when they look over there, I just sucker punch him in the jaw. Take the lower mandible clean off. Literally, it has never happened at all. Both because she's an accomplished performer and also because... She plays music well. Again, that's an anonymous double entendre. No, because she's an accomplished performer and because people aren't jerks like that, you know? I'm sure it's probably happened before. You know, you go see, like, your kid in a play or something like that. Your kid, you know, maybe not the dramatic type. They deliver their lines badly and then the parents behind you go like... And you gotta be like, hey, that's my son, okay? And he may not be the best actor amongst all the other children. But my god, he's got a better heart than you could imagine. And if you had a fraction of his kindness and compassion, you would learn to keep your mouth shut and enjoy all the work that has gone into this. Love you. All right. I have both cats in my room. I will do my best to have fun. Hello, Ruka. Dude, when she opened the door, it got like, it lowered by like 15 degrees in here. What is the, te it's 31 Celsius in this office. That's insane. Thank you for my third level bandage, girl. Um, you're like, why is it so hot? It's almost November. Yeah, I know. You know why it's so hot? Our building, once I feel a sneeze, probably because of both cats. <laughs> you are in here. Hello, Ruka. Anyway, um, our building just turned off the air conditioning building wide, and they're like, ah, it's November, you don't need this anymore. And uh, then it started to get really hot, and people were like, why does my air conditioning work? And they were like, oh yeah, we turned it off because it's the autumn. And everyone went, what do you, t turn it back on? It's not, th I recognize that if it's, not 31 degrees Celsius in the interior of your domicile, you probably don't need to use the air conditioning, okay? No question about it. But when it's 31 degrees Celsius in November, not in a while, it's the end of October now, but you get the idea. You gotta be able to use the air conditioner. I'm up here in this little closet dying. Thank you for the damage. Uh, I will probably not go to the shop now just because I'd like to stack damage as high as possible. Just keep in mind, because we're going down... Sorry, the wrong... Yeah. We're going down to the mom fight. We want to... Take the negative. Anyway, it was the end point of that rant. And I always, like, in my head now, I bring up, like, what I expect the most obvious counter-arguments to be. But NL, you're always talking about climate change. You know, how can you justify using the air conditioner um, when you're, you're always, you know, you're worried about your carbon footprint? Well, the, the answer to your question is because my office is... 31 degrees. That's why I justify using the air conditioner, is so that I don't boil my brain from the inside out recording these Isaac episodes. I would love for it to ambiently be 26 in here. That's, that would be fine by me. But, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. I don't know if this was built on, like, this apartment's built on top of an old volcano or something, but it gets hot. I'll, gla I'll pay double for electricity. And you can put half of the money towards, you know, building carbon sequesterers. But the temperature needs to come down. It's insane. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, well, but if you use your air conditioner now, won't that lead to greater emissions? And then, you know, it'll just be one degree hotter by the year, like, 2050? Yeah, but I'll probably be dead by then. That's, that's, a, that's a problem for my children. <laughs> <laughs> That's not for me to worry about. That's a tomorrow problem. 
Some people won't realize that I am being facetious. Thank you for the money. I would really like to see an arcade. I'm also like, this is a, a bit lazy. No question. But I was deliberately, not getting hit, but deliberately using my orbitals, which leads to a higher chance of me getting hit. Anyway, I pay for the air conditioning, so like, let me use it. You don't get to, what, what are you, the government? You get to choose when I do and don't get to use my air conditioner? What's next, needing a license to make toast of my own toaster? There are some people that will think I'm being genuine. Okay. I will say, if your motivation for not, that was worth it. Not sure about that one, but if your motivation for not using heating or air conditioning when it's cold or hot respectively outside is environmental selflessness, congratulations. It's a very, it's a positive thing. There are some people out there that will be mad at you because they will take your, uh, Selfless action as being needlessly and artificially virtuous those people are just mad because you're Not even on purpose. You're just highlighting their own uh, Inconsistencies with the way that they feel versus the way that they choose to live their life. You don't have to worry about that however, if your Reason for being like eh, well, you know, I'm turning the heat off. Why is minus 20? Yeah, just put a sweater on is to you know, save money on your electric bill. Uh, I've I've lived within the context of paying my own electricity, hydro, gas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, bills since the year 2007. That's uh, 11 years now. It's probably different in different places on Earth, but do keep in mind. I lived in Ontario. I lived in British Columbia, and I've lived in South Korea. There has never been a time where I got an electric bill and went like, Oh, this one's nasty. I really wish I just put on a sweater instead of enjoying myself. Now, is there a little bit of privilege in that uh, sentiment? Indeed, there might be. But I'm thinking, like, what's the difference between turning your heat on November 1st versus turning your heat on October 15th if you live in a part of the world, world where it gets cold at that age? At that age. <laughs> <laughs> at that uh, time of the year. You know, what's two weeks of heat gonna cost you? 10 or 15 bucks? If you, if you have to, you have to. And if you can't, you can't. But if you have the choice, like mix it up, dude. I will tell you, I stand by it. It's like sometimes it comes up with Twitch chat. Um, you know, we talk about how long we take showers. As a bald man, it's pretty easy to take a shower. I mean, it's easy for everybody. It's enjoyable for most people, at least. You wouldn't know it from some of the paper magic events I've played. But anyway, I'm not going to get down with that road. Um, it's a harmful line of reasoning. What I was going to say, though, is my showers last anywhere from, like, maybe slightly under five minutes to, like, slightly over ten minutes. And whenever you mention how long you shower for, you get two reactions. One reaction is, whoa, you can shower that quickly? And the other reaction is, wow, you take forever in the shower. Because, like, there's no middle ground on the internet. It's just, uh, that's Mr. Fred, isn't it? I just noticed there's a big boss room. And we're probably not going to get fourth level bandage, girl. Um, stop hemorrhaging HP, by the way, because we, we have an actual chance here. Please don't be Mr. Fred. Please let me get fourth level bandage, girl. No, <laughs> it's definitely Mr. Fred. Why does Book of Revelations give you the chance for Mr. Fred? Is it, and this is like a rant spiraling into another rant here, but like, I don't understand. I guess maybe I've got the causality backwards. Maybe when it generates the floor, it hits a flag in the code that says it's going to be Mr. Fred. It makes the item, or sorry, it makes the boss room, which has to be a different structure for Mr. Fred. And then even when you book, use Book of Revelations, it's like, ah, it's not going to work because it's a big room or something. You know, Mr. Fred has been hard-coded to start here. If it's designed so they don't make it too easy to get a fourth level bandage girl or meat boy, that's very stupid. Because, you know, I could just walk into an item room and get an item that wins me the game, like one out of every four runs. Oh, well, we wouldn't want you to 
have too easy of a time putting together our puzzle and getting an item that's, I don't know, about an eighth as good as either Brimstone or Mom's Knife. But anyway, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, what I was gonna say is sometimes, you know, if you're like, ah, I probably average like a 10 minute shower, but sometimes I've been known to take 15 minute showers. There'll be people who are like, oh, do your parents still pay your water bill? Dude, I'll show you an itemized receipt of my water bill. The water part of my electric bill is like less than $10 a month. That's like 30 cents a day for a shower. It's the cheapest entertainment you could ever have in your entire life. We got a deal with the angel. We got a tears upgrade. I'm feeling better. We definitely do want void. And we don't want... Uh, oh, don't waste that mom. We definitely don't want to suck up the key accidentally. So, Mega Satan is a genuine, realistic possibility here. I'm a very, very happy man. We will head downwards and move on. Like, in terms of the cheapest entertainment on Earth, dude, showering... It, it, it makes you believe that there's a benevolent creator. Because, you know, it's evolutionarily important for you to be clean. Not just to stop the spread of disease, but if you smell like Axe body spray, you're probably going to leave more descendants based on the commercials. I've never used them myself, but anyway, you get the idea. But then... It also, like, feels good to shower on top of it, you know? You, it's the warmth of the water hitting your skin or the coolness of the water hitting your skin, depending on the temperature outside. You know, you get to scrub a dub dub. You get to have an argument with the people sitting in front of you in your head at the last time you went to the orchestra or like, yeah, well, okay, Mr. Jenkins, how about you teach your daughter how to act? That's right. And that other one that I brought up, I would probably be the bad guy. Anyway. Dude, this happened real quick. Just remember, you're going negative, Pat. Some of the things that are good for us do not necessarily feel good. You know, like... This is maybe a bad example, but like... Some people just... I have to believe it's genuine and not just psychological, but there are people out there who are literally just like... I do not like the taste of vegetables. And maybe, you know, in my head, I, I put a lot of... Uh, wait, let me put it this way. My number one reaction whenever somebody says something like that is skepticism. And that's because I will always blame... I, I will always look to blame, let's say, uh, an individual for something within their control. So whenever somebody goes like, ah, I don't like the taste of vegetables, I always just, in my head, am like, that just means you've never, you know, like when you were a kid, you said, ah, mom, I don't like this. And then your mom, for whatever reason, was like, okay, good enough. You know, and then you were just able to eat whatever you wanted as a child from that point onwards. But I have to believe that, you know, in keeping in good faith, there must be people out there who are adults that, you know, consistently every few years try to refactor their taste buds. And then, you know, they put a piece of broccoli in their mouth and just go, eh! Broccoli is good for you. Doesn't necessarily feel good to eat. I think it, I love broccoli. It's like, though, if you are a child and you don't like broccoli, it's not your fault. If you're an adult and you don't like broccoli, I really feel like you're working on outdated information. Same way, when I was a kid, the two vegetables that the media trained children not to like were broccoli and Brussels sprouts. They're like the best vegetables. I don't know if this... I'm telling you, the carrot industry was out there trying to stop broccoli and Brussels sprouts from taking over. They're the best vegetables. Baked or fried Brussels sprouts are actually like eating a green potato chip. Broccoli, a little different, admittedly, but it's like eating an entire tree at once. They don't eat much. A little salt, pepper. You gotta cook them right. You know, broccoli is more open to being boiled, but, you know, you can also steam it as well. But Brussels sprouts, do not boil. They will make your apartment smell like farts. You bake or you fry those. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting lost in my Brussels sprout lore again. What did we unlock there? Choose tongue. Okay. Good to have. 
Many guppy items, please. Ooh, 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 notices gup. I can't believe... Like, this run is not at all bad. And it's gotten better as time has gone on. But I'm still kind of surprised that we just, like, relatively easily made it to Mega Satan and also the Lamb. Like, it's... Help. It maybe shouldn't be that surprising, but it just sort of... I don't know, it's the fact that we've got guillotine and you know we had a couple of rooms where a couple of item rooms I should say that were useless for us really I think money equals power plus the uh, amount of money that we were able to get to, uh, to use it has helped us out a lot now in spite of all that I really don't think we have like a guaranteed mega satan kill I think we're extremely likely to uh, to beat the lamb mega satan I'm kind of 50 50 on Mostly because I, I am really having a hard time dodging. I am trying to do these rooms. I'm happy I did this one. But I'm trying to do them because we have five luck. So you really, you know, do expect that you're going to get... Uh, you're going to get good stuff out of them. You know, you're going to get chests. You're going to get items, etc., etc. What I'm trying to do as well is, you know, I'm not trying to suck up uh, Pokeball. You know, it's, it's too late for other active items to probably be useful, especially ones that require relatively huge setup time, like Pokeball. It's like six rooms just to get something, then we have to pop it immediately anyway um, to get something out of it. Whip! Might have been highly incorrect there. Either way, I think you understand where my brain's going at that one with. Please just be dead. Um, what we want to do is save it to re-roll bad passives into statistical improvements. Alternatively, the other option is uh, just use it immediately to get as many spirit hearts charged up as possible. And that's kind of like, I'm hoping there's some convergent wisdom there. Maybe stop just walking into the shots. Either way, we're going to get two things unlocked. We might get three if we get lucky. Now you're realizing, as I am, you know, against these later game bosses. This is not the kind of caliber of run you'd normally be excited to have. So what do we do? Well, I do not think we need to despair. Not yet, anyway. I think we want to fight other rooms. In the hopes of getting some mighty item drops. It's always this Mega Satan-like gamble, you know? When you get a little further into a run, and it's 50-50 whether you can beat Mega Satan, do you go fight him with a limited amount of HP and maybe subpar prospects? But hey, you never know. If you dodge right, you could win. Or do you try to, you know, let the game figure something out for you? Even, like, Mega Fart. Who cares? That's not what we need. This is a pretty bad time for us. We could easily get hit twice on this room. I'm extremely bummed. Yeah, we're we're screwed. <laughs> I'm extremely bummed because I'm just now realizing your beams do not hurt each other. That's fine. That was still a really good run. We got two things accomplished. Hey, we got the curved horn as well. Definitely does not look like poop. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. That was a great deal. Of course, subscribe. You want to see more in the future? For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya.